Welcome everyone to my channel, Stacey O Designs, where I talk about all things sublimation, design, and all crafts. So today I am doing another video on Duralux and their Duralux panels. Um, I'm doing a photo panel today. I think my last video I showed you all of their different finishes, so today I'm doing a 5x7 photo panel with a glossy finish. But I have a very special guest with me today. So here is my special guest for today. He has been my helper for quite a few months now. This is, this is Kit Kat. He's been helping me in my crafting and my business, and he is my favorite partner. So today I'm doing an homage to him. And I will be taking this photo panel and putting my dog Kit Kat on it. And there you go. Now I have Kit Kat, my best employee, onto this photo panel. If you want to make your own photo panels or any product from Duralux, you can check or uh, check out all their products at duraluxprint.com and use my code Stacy O Designs to get a discount. And please make sure that you comment and follow and hit the subscribe button so you can see all of my Duralux videos and all of my upcoming YouTube videos on sublimation. So come on, let me show you how I did this. Okay, so here we are, all prepped and ready to go. Um, so this is the sublimation photo panel that I'll be doing, and it is in glossy, just like my last video showing you all of the different finishes. This is the glossy finish. And if you have not seen it yet, this is the taco holder, also in glossy. So to prep, to prep this photo panel, um, normally most of their materials come with a clear film over it. So that's been removed and I'm just going to spray it with a little alcohol to clean it off and get all the lint and fingerprints. And I'm just cleaning with a regular paper towel. Okay. And now we're going to pre-press this. I have my press set to 385 with medium to firm pressure. I press for about 30 seconds and then I flip it over and press the other side because I will be doing double sided for this. Okay, so now we have our substrate pressed and ready to go. Um, it is very, very hot, so you might want to leave it to cool down for a little while. And while that's cooling, I'm going to show you the image that I have prepared for this. The item itself is 5x7, so I've created my template 5.5x7.5. I'm just going to cut these away from each other. When you look at these photo panels, the way that they stand up is there is a seam in the back and you bend it in towards the seam. So when it stands up, this will be the front and it'll be down with a little foot in the back of it. So this is the front. So we're putting him on the front. So the way that I like to make sure everything is lined up, I know you have to press it, transfer down like this, but I like to lay my transfer face up and then align everything so that I can see what I'm doing and make sure it's straight and everything is getting covered. So how I've done this, I separated it here for this seam. So on the back, you can see where that separation is. So I'm just going to place it and align it. I'm 
right there. Okay. Looks like. And then I'm just going to use some heat tape to make sure that nothing moves. And I always make sure that I get the corners very well because they have the tendency to kind of bend upward. And my theory is to over tape because tape costs a lot less than a new substrate. So I like to make sure that it is taped very well. There is no reason that I did it in pieces at the bottom and long strips at the top. I just was talking and not paying attention. Okay, so that looks pretty well taped. So now I like to take my fingernail and go around the whole thing and make sure that I have great contact. See, that already is not working. The tape came up in that part. Because you don't want any, I don't know if you, if anybody does tumblers, so you know at the top and bottom, sometimes there's that ghosting when there's not great contact. So this is how I make sure there is great contact between the panel and the image. A nice tight fit. Okay, so we're going to do transfer face down. 385 for 120 seconds at medium to firm pressure. Okay, so at this point, be very careful because it's incredibly hot. So I do have gloves on to handle this. So the color came out perfect. I love this. And ooh, it is so hot. And the tape comes off nice and easily. And it is split right at the perfect spot. So when I go to bend this, this will be the foot on the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a minute to cool off so I can put the image on the, the other image on the back of this. Okay, so this is all cooled off, mostly cooled off, and we're ready to do the back. So first of all, don't forget, you never reuse blowout paper. If you go and use that, it will, anything, any ink that's gotten on your blowout paper will transfer to your substrate. So this is garbage. Use it for packing recycling, whatever you like. So I have a clear, a, I have a clean piece of blowout paper here. And I think I'm actually going to clean this side of it as, before I press, um, just because there might be some tape residue on it. And then same thing. So this is really just a background image. I'm just gonna 
line it up so it's straight. And this is going to be a nice, easy press. And it's okay to put tape over this uh, print. Sublimation is permanent. Um, you might get a little bit of ink from this print onto your blowout paper, but it won't be a lot and the print will remain fine. And run your finger, run your fingernail around the edges to get good contact. See right there, I don't, the paper went underneath. And so the tape went a little bit underneath, so if the tape goes underneath, you won't get um, a print in that spot. So let's just retape that. There. Okay, looks good. And same thing, transfer side, transfer paper down. Cover with your blowout paper. And again, 385 for 120 seconds, medium to firm pressure. Okay, so here we are with side two. And again, with my protective gloves on, So I did want to mention, let me get this out of here. I did want to mention that um, metal conducts heat. So when you put it into your heat press at 385 and all of a sudden you see your temperature go down to 370, it's because your substrate, your piece of metal, is absorbing that heat. It will come back up to 385. And see there was no change in this print after heating it again. So I'm just going to let it cool off for a minute and then show you how I bend it and then it's done. Okay so it is mostly cooled off right now. So now to bend it we're going to bend into this line. And it's very easy to bend it. I mean, it takes a little bit of oomph, but, and you can put it back as far as you want. And there you go. You have a cute little photo panel. And then there's the foot underneath. And then this is the back. <laughs> 